<laughs> oh well, we'll just deal with what we got. It's raw. It's it's real. This is this is how it is. Real life. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's good to see you guys all. As you know, that Emily and I are on our second day here in Haiti, and I'm very excited to be able to share with you guys uh, a new friend of mine. This is Callie. Hey everybody. Like Callie from California. Callie from Cali. You're actually from Cali, right? San Diego. San Diego area. I mean Minnesota, but really San Diego. <laughs> it's too cold there. So. Um, but we are here, and uh, right now we are in a very special cafe called Papillon. Papillon, and now that's the uh, that's the word for butterfly, right? Exactly. And I think that's a great name because what you guys do here is, is it's, it's a it's really easily represented by the transformation that takes place with a butterfly, Absolutely. Uh, changing people's lives, changing communities, and it's super exciting. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do and what the mission and goal of Papillon is. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on the vlog. Hello, everybody. Um, so we are Papillon. Um, we are a social enterprise here in Port-au-Prince. We started in 2009 um, with the mission of orphan prevention through job creation. And so um, through a series of events about uh, the founder, Shelly Jean, coming to Haiti, wanting to adopt, living at the orphanage, she began to see the moms and dads come to visit the kids. And she had this realization, which a lot of us have, which is like, wait, these aren't necessarily orphans. Yeah. These are what we would call poverty orphans. Uh, so it's estimated that about 80% of the kids that are living in orphanages in Haiti actually have parents that are alive and it's due to financial burden that they're relinquished to orphanages and so what we do is we empower those moms and dads by giving them job skills um, creating beautiful artisan products and then selling them and so it creates a sustainable business called Papillon so now we have about 250 employees we have probably eight different departments and everything we do is also almost solely out of recycled materials that is so cool I want to know if you can maybe share with us a story of a person's life that's been changed through what you guys are doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think sometimes what we believe like, oh, people can get a paycheck, people can have economic empowerment, but what does that really mean and what does that mean on a personal level? Um, and a story that, that really sticks out to me and I think is a great example of this is a woman, um, we'll, we'll call her Sarah. Um, and so Sarah um, has been in an abusive marriage, a physically abusive marriage for her entire marriage um, and she knew that she couldn't leave her husband because he was the financial provider and so every day she would have to go home to this um, throughout the years she has become a manager here at Papillon and the day when she started bringing home her own paycheck her husband stopped beating her because he knew that she now had the empowerment the dignity and the freedom to take control over her life and leave that situation and so the stories like that that I think we a lot of times we hear we hear economic empowerment, we hear job creation, but really, again, looking below the surface of what does that mean on the day-to-day -day life. That's, that's amazing. Now, you, what you guys do here, this is not a not-profit ministry, right? I think a lot of times when we think about how can we, as Christians, kind of try and change the world, that's the, the first way we go. We go towards preaching, teaching, things like that. But Papillon is an actual for business. Uh, for-profit for business. You were saying uh, in this last year, I don't know if this is okay to say on camera, you were saying last year you guys raised or, or sold over two million dollars. That's incredible. Right. How much of that goes to impacting people and then also I guess behind that question, why choose a for-profit model? Yeah, absolutely. Great questions. Um, part of that, to be honest with you, is absolutely a learning process. And I think I think that question, you know, hits it on the head is that so many times we think, oh, I'm starting a humanitarian organization, I immediately need to do a nonprofit. Well, that's not always necessarily what works, yeah, right? Yeah, people always say, I gotta Where's quit my job, I gotta do all that. that. Yeah. yeah, but that, that's not a long-term road to success. Absolutely, and so so we actually do have a nonprofit, and that goes towards, and that's poppyonempowerment.org, um, and that goes go, towards, plug away. yeah, plug away. and that goes towards our social um, projects. But on the other side of that, the actual production facility um, that sold $2 million last year is Poppyon Marketplace, and again, it, it is is about creating sustainability and with that that means bringing on experts that means bringing on consultants and, and what where's the longevity in it right like certain times nonprofits can only say it's sustainable for so long because right. a lot of times there's only money flowing out there's not money flowing in so how do you create that nice healthy cycle that fuels your mission which again is orphan prevention um, and so of course we do that through job creation through producing beautiful artists and goods and then exporting them and selling them in country and media yeah. as well um, I one thing I do want to say that I, that I think is important too um, is is 
along those lines is that a lot of times the criticism that we do get is about how do you evangelize mm -hmm. to people, right? Okay. So yep. people believe, begin to think like, you're foreigners, you're missionaries, quote unquote, you're living in Haiti. How do you evangelize that you're working? So a lot of times we do get a lot of criticism from that. Um, first of all, that's really hurtful because, you know, we're living here day in and day out um, and, and, it, and it's difficult for people to jump in. Uh, they might not understand the cultures and the, the racial complexities that are happening in this country um, and in many countries. Um, and to be able to give respect to that. And so just to that, I want, can I speak a little bit towards Please, that? Please, absolutely. Um, we, we always say we don't necessarily do a Bible study because if you're the boss and you say, hey, everybody, we're doing a Bible study from this time to this time, people are going to show up to please the boss. And that right. doesn't necessarily you will a genu genuine relationship with Christ. And so, um, you know, throughout the Bible, Christ talks about, uh, you know, empowerment. Christ talks about the orphan. Christ talks about um, poverty and, like, what our response is through that and first of all I believe it comes from developing relationships so yeah. you can walk up to somebody and you know say why are you having sex before marriage you know you're not married yet but well, what does that look like where's that gray area be in in a developing country or in places where people can't actually afford a marriage right like what does that look like and where are we to judge from the outside about about really complex situations like that and once we take time and do, learn the culture learn the language and um, develop those relationships I think that gives us more freedom to speak into people's lives as well um, whether we are a nonprofit or for profit definitely good. is that um, okay that I went to the no no I love it no no <laughs> no no love it I mean it's, it's real yeah no I think that's good yeah. uh, another thing that we were talking about <laughs> earlier that I really love that you guys do it seems like really really well is that you utilize people's gifts no matter what they are even if you can't preach if you can't teach or sing like there's still something that you can do to build up the kingdom and to, to empower other people so what are yeah, some absolutely. examples of how people can do that great question so um, I always encourage people when I when I personally moved here I was a graphic designer and all I knew was I became a Christian and a few months later God was like put all your stuff in an alley and move to Haiti and I was like is that in Africa <laughs> leave, I don't know literally, where you leave it literally in an alley. left it in an alley yeah <laughs> I was like, I felt convicted that I wasn't supposed to sell anything um, really interesting journey that God all has right. had me on hey. but I love I, I I absolutely love that because I think sometimes that we can think like I'm just a student or I'm just a welder um, I'm an accountant, but we forget, especially in social business, that we need all of those pieces oh, yeah. to it. Um, we, uh, our ceramics program, we um, are able to actually employ maybe 60 to 80 people, including the farmers with that, which is like people digging the soil, the artisans that are actually processing the clay, the ceramicists that are throwing the, you know, the mug or the bowl on the pottery wheel. And the only way that we are even able to grow that piece of the business was because people in America um, who were ceramicists who worked at a guild um, were able to come down and share their share their knowledge and share their strengths with us so just be encouraged that God gives you passions that God gives you talents and skills and strengths for a reason and he loves those and he wants you to use those okay before we close uh, I'd love to know uh, how everyone can get involved and then also if you can also think of it at the same time uh, what are some closing challenges that you give to those who are watching back at home right now? Oh yeah, good one. Um, so we, um, online, we are poppyonmarketplace.com. You can go ahead, purchase anything there, have it delivered directly to your doorstep to be able to buy gifts for people and knowing that your purchase has power, um, that your dollar has power and how you're spending your money really does truly affect people's lives here. Um, we see it day in and day out what that environment does. To support the social um, piece of it, it's poppyon.com empowerment.org um, so we would love uh, you know if you feel led today to give towards some of the social programs which helps people get education literacy classes um, and all types of different things um, that we're trying to do here to care for people even more holistically um, and then just to challenge you to to be praying about what does God have you do if you you know when I was in a Bible study a few years ago before I knew anything about Haiti I was again a baby Christian and somebody said to me how you keep talking about all these other countries, you keep talking about mission work. And I said, what do you mean? If somebody knocked on your door and said, move to China tomorrow, you wouldn't move to China tomorrow? And they said, no, why would I do that? Oh, and I was like, I thought everybody felt that way. I thought that was a real thing. And so if, they, they say, if you 
are feeling that nudge in your heart, that's something you should listen yes. to. And There's a reason why that, that's reason. there. That, that is the beginning of God's yeah. leading in your life. Absolutely. So awesome. I challenge you to listen to that nudge. All right. Maybe it is that you need to go and pack everything, leave it in an alley, and <laughs> go to Haiti. Uh, maybe it is that God wants you to stay at home where you are and to create change there. But whatever it is, we want to challenge you guys to follow whatever God is calling you guys to do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Callie, for Thank your time. You. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And we just want to encourage you guys. What you guys are doing is awesome. Thank you. So keep it up. Thanks. All right. So until next time, as I like to say, I'm that Christian vlogger, and I encourage you to experience faith in the first person. God bless. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch that video. I know that I definitely learned a lot from that conversation, and I hope you did as well. But before you guys go, I wanted to encourage you guys to check out their website. They have things like shirts, and, you know, for me, I actually ended up with a coffee mug. Uh, but, you know, your simple purchase can actually go a long way to help these uh, families stay into intact and to help, you know, orphan prevention and to help make a difference in the world out there. So if you guys wanted to support what Papillon is doing, they did give us a discount code. Uh, the code is on the screen right now. Uh, you can get a little discount for yourself. You can support someone else and make a difference in the world. As a quick disclaimer, this video was not at all sponsored. I don't make any money from this video, but it is a cause that I definitely believe in and I want to encourage you guys to check it out for yourself. But until the next video, I'll see you guys next time.